So before we jump a little bit into the DJ part of it, though, is those lessons learned came to what we're doing now for 2008. In 2008, we created a couple of things. We emphasized the fact that Latino youth are online in record numbers. And one thing that we did was a social network community, which was called Crash the Parties. Crash the Parties we created in conjunction with one of our media partners, CTV. And CTV is kind of like the equivalent of BET. So there's CTV, LATV, and MTV3. And with Crash the Parties, we said, OK, you, what we found in 2006 is that a lot of these young people weren't registering to vote because, one, they didn't know the process, and two, people weren't asking. So what better way to know the process than to crash the party, become an embedded reporter at the DNC and the RNC, and report to your peers what you're finding on the ground. And again, an opportunity to create civic engagement, an opportunity for folks that say, you know what, I can do that. We created, this was completely, this was a six-week six program. We received over 125 submissions, and over 40,000 people came to the site to, to vote for who their Crash the Parties representative is going to be. And the little, you'll see right there, it says Crash the Parties, vote for Wendy. That was, some of the, that was some of the online stuff that we were starting to see. We also started getting calls from local newspapers, because young people wanted to write to their local newspaper why they should be voted for Crash the Parties. And then, I'll, and this is a true story, and I was actually at a, a club in New York not wearing my Vote a Latino hat, and I actually had a kid come up to me saying, will you vote for me? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And sure enough, it was a crash the parties. So that was exciting. It was like it got viral. But, and kids felt like they had ownership for it. So that's basically, so what we did there is we created this area on July 22nd. I can't tell you who the winners are, but July 22nd, this Tuesday, we're actually unveiling them on Capitol Hill with Senator Menendez, Senator Martinez, and also with Rosario Dawson and a couple of other members of Congress, but also Rick Sanchez, who's an anchor for CNN. And these young people are going to shadow Rick Sanchez during both conventions so that they can learn the process. APCO Worldwide came on board, and they're actually going to do training for them, media training, so that they can feel, again, empowered on camera and online as well. So we're, we're thrilled about this one. So that was one way of how we took a community building online initiative, and we're actually drilling it down to the ground as well, recognizing that the best way is for these young people to create conversations and feel empowered by it. I mean, and one of the biggest tragedies right now, I think, right now, is that folks take for granted there aren't very many people, Latinos, that are actually considered political experts or actually in the media. So we're, this is a way for us to actually say, you know what, this is a way for them to feel empowered and actually change that conversation as well. And these are basically just a piece of all the online initiatives that we've done. One thing that we've, we've partnered again with, uh, with Voto Latino, we created a, we have a network of about 135 online publishers. And these publishers and bloggers basically create an opportunity for us to create buzz. And what we've done is everything from live blogging with them. So on, on Tuesday, Super Tuesday, what we did is we hosted 13 hours of live blogging. We spread it out to these networks. We had over 350 people come to our site, ask questions of where should I vote? What, who should I be voting for? We never responded to those. Um, and also give them an opportunity of everything to, as detailed as, you know what, I, where's my polling place? Where we found that people were actually offering to give each other rides if they found out that they lived closer to each other. But again, community building. And this time, we're at, for, for election day, we're actually going to work with the lawyers committee so that we can actually have a lawyer on hand so that if there are questions online about that they don't have the proper ID or what have you, we can actually create a live blogging again so that folks can immediately are able to stream questions. The other thing is with um, the reason that we have the Voto Latino, we did a Voto Latino benefit album with iTunes, and it was more, we created a very aggressive, uh, aggressive uh, price point of $3.99, but it was more of, let's see how effective our online bloggers are to disseminate information. And it was kind of more of an experiment, like, does it work, does it not? In less than three and a half hours, we were able to disseminate, again, to our bloggers coalition, online publishers, our iTunes benefit album hit number one. And it stayed there for three and a half weeks. But it was only because we didn't have money for marketing. But what we did was we identified who those influencers online were across the country. So when folks say, you know, how, how do you do social networking? How are the Latino bloggers online? And how do you find those folks? It's a matter of really going from one person, finding that epicenter, and moving them around and getting them excited. And as Drummond mentioned earlier, there's something going on within the Latino community as well. 
we're seeing a sense of excitement, but also want of empowerment. Because everybody keeps telling us we're Latino, and we're very proud of being Latino, but people keep forgetting to tell us, you know what, you're American too. So when we start talking to folks about the, the importance of being an American Latino, being prideful, they're like, you know what, we know this, but no one's been talking to, the, to us about this. So it's an excitement. Um, I was in Netroots, just a personal story, I was in Netroots yesterday, and it was so much fun, because I was on a panel, came out, and I, literally there were four, four people there, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm Manji, I'm like, Manji. And then they started, I realized that they were the part of the blogger coalition that we'd been cultivating for the last year and a half, and we finally got to meet them in person. And they were so excited, because they felt that finally this was an opportunity for them, who had never really had a chance to meet, but also feel like they're, not only, they're coming in, creating part of a movement, and actually disseminating information when they see results. So I think a lesson learned from this campaign is the importance of making sure that when you do find influencers, make sure that you can provide them with the actual results. And that gets people excited. So finally, we have the iTunes cards. And the reason we have the iTunes cards was that for a long time, we'd been disseminating a lot of literature on the ground. But we weren't sure really what conversion their, what was going on, and was, you know, is it a good use of your resources? Now, granted, five free songs is usually a good way to convert people, right, <laughs> to online. But what we partnered with them in Central Park, for example, last weekend, we passed out 4,000 of these during the Latin Alternative Music Conference, which is the largest conference outside of the United States that provides industry insiders to come in. They discuss it. They discuss, you know, the the main parts of the music industry, how it's changing, but they also hold huge concerts in Central Park. So we passed out 4,000 of those in Central Park. We literally had a 20% rate return, which is pretty significant. Because what we're doing right now with iTunes is that we're actually gonna have a voter registration button. So every time someone receives this, they are able to download the picture, but they also can hear, learn about the can about, uh, more about Voto Latino, but more importantly, they can do voter registration right there. So again, how do you infuse and integrate their information into their everyday life? And finally, we've created a lot of partnerships where you see there's a voter registration button on USHLI, United States Hispanic Leadership Institute. We have, again, they're part of our over 130 online partners. And just an opportunity, again, for where these are areas where people come, young people come, and they see the information and how do, can we get them empowered?